Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. My brothers and sisters, we come here today to hear Christ call us in the gospel, to, cho- to ask us to choose whether we are that good grain that will bear plenty or we wish to fall into the weeds. That's for later. I warn you, today's gospel is a bit of a stinger. Nevertheless, it is because Christ loves us that he calls us to him, that he calls us into his kingdom. We come before him then in penitence and faith and offer ourselves wholly, acknowledging those times when we have fallen away from him, when our thoughts, words and actions have allowed us to slip into sin. Let us ask for mercy and forgiveness for those times of failing in our lives. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners, Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came came to gather all into your kingdom. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And so let's pray. Show favour, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace that made fervent in hope, faith and charity. They may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. The reading from the book of Wisdom. There is no God besides you, Lord, whose care is for all people, to whom you should prove that you have not judged unjustly. For your strength is a source of righteousness, and your sovereignty over all causes you to spare all. For you show your strength when people doubt the completeness of your power, and you rebuke any insolence among those who know it. Although you are a sovereign in strength, you judge with mildness, and with great forbearance you govern us, for you have power to act whenever you choose. Through such works you have taught your people, 
that the righteous must be kind. And you've filled your people with good hope because you give repentance for sins. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response. Lord, you are good and forgiving. Lord, you are good and forgiving. Yes, O Lord, you are good and forgiving, abounding in steadfast love to all who call on you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my cry of supplication. Lord, you are good and forgiving. All the nations you have made shall come and bow down before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. For you are great and do wondrous things. You alone are God. Lord, you are good and forgiving. But you, O Lord, are a merciful and gracious God, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Turn to me and be gracious to me. Give me your strength to be your servant. Lord, you are good and forgiving. Reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. The Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that, that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the inter Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. You have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus put, put before the crowds a parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slave said to him, then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, no. For in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow until the harvest, and at harvest time I will tell the reapers. Collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Would you be seated, please? Oh, I did warn you that was a bit of a stern one, didn't I? Crumbs. The Grim Reaper. Wow, now you know where it comes from. Um, it's got nothing to do with the salmon moose. It's about, uh, from Matthew's Gospel, salmon moose, Monty Python's life of, uh, life of Brian, and uh, not life of Brian, meaning of life, there we are. It's in the salmon moose. I digress. Let's get back to the Gospel. The Grim Reaper, this, this, we remember this one, don't we? We've all got the picture in our mind. It's something which actually has been since the Middle Ages uh, used in iconography to try and explain judgment. Oh dear, here we are in the middle of summer. It's getting nice out there. And you've come here to church to get a little bit of respite from the world and you walk straight into a judgment gospel. And it, sorry, it's going to be judgment for a couple of three weeks now. Can't get away from it. It's where it comes down from above from the lectionary. And so we have Jesus is following up on the story from last week here. Remember last week, the parable of the sower? All very nice, yeah? It all seemed to be going on somewhere else. The seed being thrown out somewhere else. But now, it's as Jesus is taking that apart with his disciples and apostles, in the same way he explained the uh, parable of the sower, he's now talking to them about sort of their place. And we have another version of the, the so we have this time we have the good seed being cast out that's all good yeah i hope you th yeah, you want to be in that bracket don't you you want to be the good seed yes 
I'll just let you at home know, then kind of nodding. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes, we all want to be amongst the good seed. But, you know, this is Matthew's gospel. And Matthew is very much uh, from his Jewish understanding of an all-powerful God. And I mentioned the other week, atonement. That for Matthew is waiting for that moment when everyone will be judged. Uh. He can't help but put this, uh, this other parable that Jesus has said straight after the parable of the sower. And now we have the landlord, the master, goes out and sows a field. And then along comes this person sneaks in at night and plants the weeds. It's an awkward moment, is it not? It's a very awkward moment for us because if God is all good, I hear you asking me, or well, you are, why does he create, or why does he allow this evil thing to be in place? Yes, we can definitely see in the parable that now, the planter of the weeds, call him what you will, why am I saying he? Call it what you will. Evil, sin, the devil, Satan. There's a whole shed load of names. But it is a purposeful action which we hear in the parable, which is a problem. But not for Matthew that wrote it. Matthew knows there is a black and white version of good and evil, sin and sinless, heaven and uh, <laughs> hell that we have in our lives a simple choice to make. We can choose, if we want, to allow ourselves to flourish like the good seed, like the good plants. But, and this is where the, the kind of relationship we have with God changes from the Old Testament to the New Testament. We have more freedom now. We have more freedom as Christians than we would have as Jews in that first century before Christ. We have freedom to choose, not just once in our life, I'm going to get baptised, I'm going to be christened, get my kids done, but we have that freedom to choose day by day, hour by hour, minute by minute. Now, I'm, oh, I'm, I'm on the spot shuffling uncomfortably right now, because I know about the ones that I've got right, and I also know about the ones... I haven't got right. I think there are probably more on this side at the moment if I look at the scales of justice. I've got a few years to try and make up for it. But it is in this parable. It is a challenge from us from Christ to examine our lives day by day, to make choice. The gift of making choice is a strong one. I don't know if you remember the film, um, is it uh, Bruce Almighty? Uh, with Jim Carrey in it. He gets given, he, he gets angry one day and he shouts to God, if only if I had your power. So God says, all right, I'll show you what it's like and gives him power. And it all goes wrong. It goes terribly wrong. At the end of the day, he's saying, I, 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 I don't want it, give it back. I don't want millions and millions. I don't want all these things that I can just summon out of there. I want to be me, humble, and to have the choice minute by minute whether to do the right or the wrong thing. Good film. Definitely worth finding. I think you buy it for about two quid in Tesco's now on the, as you go through the checkout. It's that old. Definitely worth watching. So as we come into this judgment season, it's actually not quite as black and white as you think it is. We're not designed for there or there. It's not chosen for you now. Because as we hear, especially with Paul, we've been reading his letter to the Romans recently, Paul understands that struggle. Paul is very useful for us. Remember Paul's story. He started off condemning Christ. He was part of the squads that went round, 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 went round rounding up Christians and throwing them into prison. And if they didn't renounce Christ, they stone them to death. That's where Paul's relationship with God started. It couldn't be worse. So how on earth did Paul go from there to being the model Christian for us? It is because of that journey 
It is because of his acknowledgement that he can see that Paul grows into the one that God uses, that God uses to tell us all these centuries later of his forgiveness. God doesn't just forgive. He didn't go, you're, you're fine, they're out. I'm sorry, Lord, you know. Remember what kids are like when they're little. They get it wrong, they want it fixed very quickly. They've smashed your favourite teapot, teacup, you know. They've done whatever and they come, oh, sorry. <laughs> what Paul sees is that forgiveness begins when you begin to examine yourself. I'm sorry for breaking the cup, but I'm sorry for how I felt about you when I broke the cup. They'll buy another one. Paul examines and says it's the spirit that will change you, as it changed him. And forgiveness that pours in as it changed him. All right. For the benefit of those at home, they're still looking a bit worried. It is this sense of judgment which sits with us, not to condemn us, but actually to release us. The good judge, as we remember way back, remember the stories of Solomon, the good judge will always seek what is good for us, healing and wholeness, not condemnation. The Lord doesn't want us to go there, he wants us to go there and will do whatever he can and so Jesus comes and calls us and badges us time and time again in the gospel especially of Matthew think about it pull your socks up and the reward is wonderful and my forgiveness and mercy will be poured into your life I'm going to get a bit more of this next week but not quite uh, um, on this uh, clear clear cut judgment thing we're about examining ourselves are we condemned no we are on the road to redemption and the road to redemption will go up and down according to us actually we're the ones that make it wind up and down we have our good days and our bad days but nevertheless the road is still there that is the promise of christ his road as we know as we follow the gospels was indeed a road at time of pain and worry and anger and of joy. And so too will ours. The destination we know is there. And that will never go away. And that's the great gift of Christ Jesus. We are not wasted, but we are saved. And we are being saved right now. And we will be saved on that final day. That's enough. Let's just take a moment and then we'll declare the faith which the people of God throughout the world hold as we all journey towards our heavenly homeland. So let us then stand, and and I ask you these questions of our faith. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord? He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? I do. In that faith, we have confidence to offer our prayers to God our Father. We pray for those at this time who are tending for all who are sick or are caring for those in need all who visit their neighbour and bring food and comfort 
We pray for those at this time who are living with fear day by day, those who are afraid to go out. We pray for all in our communities who are caring for one another. Throughout our world, we pray for all whom this day is a day of danger, for those still suffering in warfare which happens in our world, and for tensions between nations that they may dissipate. We pray for our families and friends, those whom we share our daily lives with, for all on our parish sick list who ask for our prayers, and those whom we know who ask for our prayers. We pray for the departed, for Sheila, for all whose years mind falls at this time, that that wonderful forgiveness and mercy of Christ Jesus may open for them the way to paradise. And we offer ourselves humbly to Christ Jesus, placing before him all things in our lives which we bring to him this day everything we seek guidance and comfort for, and the thanksgivings we acknowledge day by day. We gather our prayers together and place them before Christ Jesus, our loving Saviour. Amen. We are the body of Christ, and in one spirit we were baptised into one body. Let us then pursue everything that makes for peace and builds up our life together. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all his church. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from our, your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel so that what each of us received to the honour of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you stand, please? The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly right, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer, to live like us in all things but sin, 
so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience you have restored to those gifts, your, gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of his, the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognising the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Bartholomew, Mark, Anne, and with all the saints on whose constant prayer in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servants Jonathan, Robert, Nick, our bishops, your clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in, in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. 
Lord, I'm not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. the body of Christ. Amen.
So let us pray. Gracious to be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, my famous words to you last week were, uh, be careful, it's going to be warm, it's going to be a scorcher. It wasn't until yesterday, and then I spent all, all day outside and I'm burnt with a crisp. There we are, so I don't follow my own advice. <laughs> but do keep me careful in the heat. Um, very interesting this week, um, a good friend of mine, uh, Father Will Hazelwood, he's now, not well, he's still Father Will Hazelwood, but he's now Bishop Will Hazelwood. Um, was, uh, was best man at my wedding. He was, he was ordained a bishop at Lambeth Palace on Thursday. Um, the strangest, uh, strangest, I'll be careful, he might be watching this right now, sorry Will. Um, strange, uh, strange thing, you know, all the bishops had masks on. Bishop Jonathan and Robert were there, uh, the Archbishop, and they all came in for a second, all masked up. I thought, well, there we go, that's the, that's the current time for you. Um, but he was made a bishop, and it certainly sort of struck me. You remember at school when you're all lining up to be selected to be part of a school team? And if you're rubbish like me, you know, you were one of the last to be drawn and then you ended up sort of a defence or on the wing where hopefully the ball would never come near you. Uh, <laughs> I had that kind of a feel watching Paul Will with the subject this week as well of, of uh, Jews choosing and judgment anyway. So things are kind of ticking over in the background in the church. It's, I think we're into this pattern, as I said, for a little while. We'll stay like this uh, until things uh, begin to change uh, uh, with uh, the medical advice. Um, we're very fortunate in this diocese that uh, the Deputy Chief Medical Officer of England retired about five years, seven years ago, and she's now a, a, a clergy person down near uh, Torquay. So whenever we have meetings and stuff, we have somebody who actually knows what they're on about, um, which is rather nice, giving us the advice of what we can and can't do. So we're following it. That's where we're getting all the advice of what we're doing right now. There you go. I'm not making it up. It's, uh, it's how it comes to us. All right, so look after yourselves this week. It's hot, isn't it? I'm absolutely baking. I've got five layers on. Um, I'm just going to throw them off in a minute with great joy, I have to say. So look, af look after yourselves this week. Take care. See you next week, I hope. Or if not, if you can't get in next week, I'll come into your living room. What more could you want? <laughs> well, not in real life anyway. Would you stand, please? The Lord be with you. Hasten to the aid of your faithful people who call upon you, O Lord, we pray, and graciously give strength to our human weakness, so that being dedicated to you in complete sincerity, we may find gladness in your remedies both now and in the life to come. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. The angel of the Lord brought tidings to Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to your word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. We beseech you, O Lord, pour your grace into our hearts, that as we have known the incarnation of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, so by his cross and passion, we may be brought to the glory of his resurrection through the same Christ our Lord. Amen.